My name is Jari Bolander. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Ethos Podcast. On this podcast, we're going to take a deep dive into the traits, values, beliefs, and skills of all sorts of entrepreneurs to learn how to build a more ethical, inclusive, and resilient world. Let's get started. Roger Wakefield. Welcome to the show. Jari, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. I am so excited to talk with you because you are tackling something that is so important, and that's the traits. You know, the people that fix your toilet, the people that roof your house when stuff goes terribly wrong. And like you, I really appreciate and honor the blue collar work ethic. I think that us in Silicon Valley, and I will include myself in the Silicon Valley quote unquote elite crowd, do not pay enough attention to this. We don't give the trades, the tools and technology and the training required to be successful. I know I've seen the statistics, you know, if you're a, a Mike Rowe fan, which I totally am, you see all the statistics about how the shortage in the trades, how people are not getting into it and how they're we're pushing people to college. Honestly, not everyone should go to college. I'm just going to say that right now. It's somewhat of a scam, just so you know, like, and this is from a Gen Xer who went to college, got an MBA the whole night, but let me tell you, some folks just shouldn't go. Um, and I want to talk with you about that. I want to talk with about what you're doing over, over at rogerweekfield.com. But before we get all into that, as I always like to say, you know, tell us how you got to do what you're doing today. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I started out as a plumber and I started plumbing my junior year in high school. I'd quit high school and I loved it. Now I ended up going back. Uh, luckily I was far enough ahead when I quit. I was able to graduate with my class. So I went back the next year and graduated and tried a couple of other things and I always got back into plumbing. Plumbing was a good income. It was a good steady job. It was consistent. So there were just so many wonderful things about it. And I really did. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the fact that every day I went home, I knew I put in a good hard day's work. 40 years later, uh, probably not even that long, about 35 years later, I decided to open my own company. And in the course of my career, I had been commercial, residential, industrial, service, new construction, non-union, union, then, yeah, then non-union again. And I just realized, look, I can talk about all aspects of plumbing. So I started a YouTube channel to help grow my business, my plumbing business, to help make my phone ring. I spent $47,000 to make my phone actually stop ringing. And that's a hard thing to do. So I had already talked to other marketing companies about doing social media, and I didn't like the answers that I was getting. So I went out to San Diego, went to a conference, walking down the hall to learn social media, which as a 54 year old plumber is Facebook. And I'm walking down a corridor and I see a placard out in front of a door. It says, get in front of your customers using video. So I walk in this door going, I'm a, I'm a front row learner. I don't want to see anything move up. I'm, I'm easily distracted squirrels and shiny objects. And I'm sitting here and the guy walks out. And one of the first things he says is YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And I, I, I looked at him and I thought, this guy's nuts. He has no idea what he's talking about. I shut my notebook. I put my hand on the chair next to me to turn around and get up. And I look back and the back of the room is standing room only. Now I'm smart enough to know, okay, this guy must know something. So I turn back around and look up. The next words out of his mouth were, and YouTube is owned by Google, the largest search engine in the world. And it immediately went through my mind, wait, we're spending so much money a month on Google. Why aren't we doing anything on YouTube? So I walked out of that conference. I uh, actually had to leave early. So the conference was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I left early afternoon on Friday. Didn't get to stay for the keynote. Hop on my plane. There's nobody next to me. So I've got two trays folded down in front of me. I've got my laptop out, my iPad out. 
my, my notebook out and all the little notepads they give you. And I start coming up with an implementation plan. And all day Saturday, all day Sunday, I had to come back early because Saturday morning I was on a radio show. After the radio show, I go back to the office, work till about six o'clock, get up Sunday morning, go to church, come back to the office, work till about five o'clock. And then Monday morning when I walk in the office, plumbing happens. And man, we're busy. And just we're, we're busy off the stuff that we, we, we had going on. So I get all the plumbers out and I call everybody else in the office together and said, guys, we're changing the way we do our marketing. We're going to change it now. We're going to start doing YouTube. And they literally thought I was crazy. But we got on YouTube, learned how to do YouTube. Uh, my stepson worked for us, had him take over the, the reins on that. He did a fantastic job. And that was five, well, it's almost six years ago now. And we're now the biggest plumbing YouTube channel in the world. And it made the phone ring. So it, it really did pay off. Wow. Wow. Biggest plumbing channel on YouTube. That's something to say. <laughs> you, you know, it, well, and, and when I speak at conferences, I, I was at a conference the other day speaking to other tradespeople, landscapers, lawns, irrigation, people like that. And I literally tell them, hey, hey, pull out your phone, open up YouTube and search plumbing. I'm the first thing that pops up. And then I tell them, well, now it came up. You have to subscribe. That way it doesn't mess up the algorithm, <laughs> but which is true. But, right, right, right. but, but, you know, how many entrepreneurs out there wish that they could tell somebody, open up YouTube and search real estate, open up YouTube and search automotive repair. Whatever word you want them to search, if they could open that and you come up number one, how good would that be for your business? Oh, huge, huge. I mean, just imagine from a local perspective, like, like blah, you know, Boca Raton plumber, like you or whatever, you know, any, anything like that is super valuable. Yeah. But, but, but think about that because that's what I started it for, for the local. I was trying to make the phone ring at my plumbing company in Richardson, Texas. So. That's what we started it for. And it actually started working. But then we started growing. And, and here's where this really does help is I remember I finally found a better website guy. So we, we fixed our website. It was working. And I remember him sending me a screenshot one day. At the time, I'm a $1 million a year company. The biggest competitors in town are doing almost 75 and 85 million a year. Wow. And he showed me a screenshot. Dallas, Texas plumbing. And I came up ranked right above both of those. So when you look at YouTube and what it does, it, you know, it helps build your domain authority. It helps build your page authority. It helps build so many things that as a plumber, I mean, five years ago, I didn't even know what those things were. And now here I am owning them in the Dallas area. It's not a bad deal. No, I mean, from a, from a marketing share of voice I mean all the buzzword bingo on the marketing side that's like a huge valuable asset it used to be when you were in the yellow pages the reason why there was triple a plumbing and four a plumbing was so that oh i look a plumber and you're right there at the top i mean that's the classic absolutely like, you know how you say which is you know nick regis mckenna was the guy out here that did that like why is it apple well because apple started with a you bet <laughs> that was the Revelation in marketing, right? Not, mm -hmm. not so much anymore, but wow, that's really cool. Cause I've, what I've seen is a lot of tech companies that are mm -hmm. pretty good at this. Some, I mean, honestly, some of them are really horrible at it, but the general premise and the general methodology seems to be pretty sound. Like be useful. People find you. And then they call you when they need your service. <laughs> I sound simple, but I'm a simple guy, right? You know, it's the way, way it works, right? Uh -huh. Because I think, especially in video, I mean, one of the reasons I started doing this show on video, because I used to just do audio, was, you know, people want to connect with who you are. Like this whole no like, and trust thing is like important and word of mouth is important. And the trust that you put in like, hey, this... This guy Roger seems to know a little bit thing or two about plumbing. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind 
toilet starts stops starts running or can't flush or whatever, I call this guy. Is that kind of how it worked? I mean, I, I haven't looked at your YouTube channel, which is I'm going to do after this, but what were some what was the content you were sort of generating that did that? In, in the very beginning, remember, I wanted to start a YouTube channel to teach people how to fix their own plumbing. And a lot of people said, Roger, you're nuts. They fix their own plumbing. They don't need you. Well, you said no lack and trust. I changed that up a little bit. It's no love and trust and who you're connected to. Well, if you've gone to my YouTube channel because you're trying to figure out how to fix the slab leak under your house or even how to find the slab leak under your house, and you find this guy named Roger that pops up, and you realize the name of his company is Texas Green Plumbing. You start looking like, okay, let me go check Texas Green Plumbing. Well, that's what helps the domain authority out. But here's the deal. I've become your trusted advisor. I've explained to you what a slab leak is, how they occur, how they're located, how they're found, how they're pinpointed, how they're repaired, and how you better know how to speak English if you want insurance to help pay for it. Yeah. Now I've become the guy. It's like, look, this guy's explained it to me like nobody else has. When you can become, and Sandler Sales Training calls it their trusted advisor, man, you're the guy. And people watch me. I, I'd have people tell me, Roger, I get, I get on the treadmill every morning and I spend an hour with you. Wow. And they're watching video after video after video. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's great. Are, are you a plumber or Thinking about fixing your own plumbing, right? And you're like, oh my God, I would never touch my own plumbing. <laughs> God, no, but but it's just so fun to watch you. And now I know about it. And well, that it's crazy. It. it is. Well, and I think the thing that I love the whole, you know, no love and trust because one of the other things that no love, cool, trust, and connected to that's the big thing that and so many people right. leave. They the they lose that. Yeah. Right. The connection. Because I mean, I think what some people might say is, well, you know, again, hey, Roger, you're telling people how to fix it. You're going to get out of a job. But you know what's interesting about that is if you want to hire someone to do it, if you know what you should expect, you feel way more comfortable that they're not going to screw you, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, there's been times where you're kind of like, hold on, this, this doesn't feel right, you know? And hopefully in their head is they're like, you know what? I saw Roger do this and he didn't do it this. They didn't, he didn't do it this way. <laughs> yes, yes. I just wonder if, if that's part of it too. I mean, the whole connection. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, I get calls like that. It's like, oh, hey, wow. Roger, look, I got a plumber here right now looking for a leak and he's doing it wrong. Will you talk to him? No, he's got his way. I've got mine. I'm, I'm not saying he's wrong. All right. And they're like, oh, no, no, I've watched you. He's doing it all wrong. <laughs> And it's like, look, if he wants to watch my video, that's fine. But it's not my job to teach your plumber how to do his job, right? No, no. So no. it is. It's pretty funny. I love that. I love that. Because I think, especially for this sort of stuff, which, you know, look, it's complicated. You know, plumbing, mm -hmm. electrical, construction. Yeah, you know, someone could learn it, but it, it's like the time it takes to learn it the right way and all the experience and you know, everything that matters to do it right it takes a lot of time and effort. I mean, it's a skill. It's a, it's a highly valuable skill. So is, so how, do, so do these videos also sort of roll into if someone's interested in being a plumber? I mean, how, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, they, they do. You know, Jerry, it's funny. We started the whole channel to make the phone ring at Texas Green Plumbing. And we really started studying the analytics and engaging with our community and, and replying to the comments. And at one point we realized, look, we've got more plumbers talking us, talking to us than anybody. So at that point we changed the name of the channel from Texas green plumbing to the expert plumber, which was a contest that I had won through American standard in 2016. And we thought, you know, let's just, let's just call it the expert plumber had, it started growing. It started doing really good. But then we kept studying the analytics and we realized, like, we, we, don't, we don't just have plumbers. We've got HVAC techs. We've got roofers. We've got electricians. We've got welders. We've got all kinds of people watching us. And in the comments, they're like, Roger, if I take out the word plumber and put in the word electrician, you made me a better man. You made me a better technician. 
you made me a better installer. You taught me that females could get into the trades. We have received the most amazing comments. So at that point, we started looking through analytics again. Now, plumbing was not our biggest search term. Roger Wakefield was. So we changed the name of the channel to Roger Wakefield. And it's, it's turned out pretty good so far. <laughs> well, it's the number one plumbing channel. And now it's probably the number one trade channel, right? It, it's, or, it's, it's getting there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and, and, and think about what you just said. Yeah. We got so big on there. Now we started a second YouTube channel called The Trade Talks. And I literally do just what you're doing. It's a podcast. I bring in people. I interviewed an HVAC technician. Literally just finished the interview an hour and a half ago. An HVAC technician in the Dallas area who his best year, last year, he made $330,000 as a technician in a truck. Not a bad gig. No, no. Especially if that's, you know, like you're your own boss kind of thing. And, you know, like what, what we're trying to do here <laughs> is just expose people to the entrepreneur way of life. And just the power of how you can take, you know, you can take control, for lack of a better word, of your destiny. I mean, that, that, that's the thing that I always was just fascinated about, you know, contractors, people that run their own gig. Um, lucrative, a hard work. I'm not saying it's easy, but boy, highly skilled, hard to find a good one, and uh, in demand. I mean, I think... If I looked at the numbers, and maybe you have better numbers on this, but in terms of the deficits in the trades, it's like in the millions. It's got it's got to be in the millions of people. It, yeah, just, yeah. A what few is, year, a few years ago, Jerry, it, it was nine hundred thousand. It's over a million now. Yeah. I, I tell people every day. Look, here's what I'm trying to do. Here's why I do what I do. Right now, there's one million unfilled trades jobs across the United States. Over a million. There's a trillion dollars in student debt for college. Okay. My big, my BHAG is to help recruit 150, or I'm sorry, 1.5 million people into the trades. 1.5 million. Help 750,000 tradesmen become better. Understand the problem is once we get into the trade, I got in plumbing to become a plumber. Once I became a plumber, I quit learning. I was out plumbing every day. I didn't learn anything new. Then later I realized, wait, there's more things to learn about this. So I started learning and growing and becoming a foreman and a superintendent. I was eventually director of operations for a large mechanical contractor before I walked out of, walked away from that job and opened up my own company. So after the 750,000 helped 500,000 of these people learn to start their own business. Michael Gerber was my first coach. He said, look, we, we get kids jobs in the trades. We send doctors and lawyers and CPAs to college to get a degree to learn what they do. We never teach them to run a business. No, they're pretty bad at it. And that's why a lot of them aren't very successful at it. Yeah. And then my last group is 200, <laughs> help 250,000 people that have their own trades business learn to use networking and social media to grow it and make their phone ring. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's very noble goal. I think, you know, if you look at kind of the history of all the trades and unions and like how America was built, right. You know, like you got to build stuff, right. Just don't do what I do is sit around and come up with fancy names and marketing strategies in my office in Silicon Valley as I type, right. Mm -hmm. right? It's important and don't get me wrong, you know, I get paid well for it, but you know, you want the toilet to flush, someone's going to have to make it flush. And, and I think what's been missing lately, um, and, all right, and I think it's shifted maybe during my generation, I'm Gen X, I'm 52. So there was a big push to go to college, but not everyone went to college. Um, but a lot over the last two decades, three decades, the push has been pretty strong. Maybe after the, over the last two decades that the road to middle-class success is a college degree. And I think that's largely been proven false. 
um, especially with all this debt and all the crazy shenanigans that go on with ratcheting up the debt to get a degree that basically, I mean, depending on the degree, is useless. <laughs> so I just think this is such a great idea. I mean, how, how has how's the reception been? I mean, this is a big nut to crack. This is a hard mentality to have, right? It's the only celebrity that I know about is Mike Rowe that does this, the only one. And okay. I just, how has it been? How, how's the traction? How do you, how do you think about getting the word out about this? You know, it's, it's through social media. It's me getting on stages. Uh, social media is our big deal. And we're, you know, we've got 575,000 subs on YouTube. We're at almost 600,000 on TikTok. We're at almost 100,000 on Instagram. So we've got them all covered and we're growing on each one. But eventually I think that the, the big thing for me is I end up getting on bigger stages. I end up getting on stages talking to either entrepreneurs about how I've used YouTube and social media to become a plumber. But oh, by the way, I know a lot of plumbers and HVAC techs and electrician that make two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars a year, or even take that number down to a hundred. Most plumbers and technicians I know make over a hundred grand a year. Most of them, without going to college, and we go to school for the same time. We either go through an apprentice training program or we put in the hours. But I think that what I do is I, I keep putting the information out there through social. Uh, people like you hear about me, they're like, hey, let's, let's get this guy on a podcast. Let's talk about him, see what yeah. he does. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the the trades conferences, uh, they're starting to reach out and say, hey, we'd be interested in you coming and speaking on our stage. Now, the thing is, they're already in front of these students. But the good thing is, a lot of these students think, I want to get in to become a plumber. They don't think about learning and growing, that just getting in and becoming a plumber can lead to entrepreneurship. And, it, you know, it, it's sad. They had me speak at some of the local schools here on trades or not trades days, career days. And I love it because they always put me down at the far end. That They start with the banker and the <laughs> businessman and, and the, 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 the salesperson and all this. And yeah. everybody's going through the line saying, look, you know, you got to be an entrepreneur. You got to do this. You got to do this. Yeah. You got this. And it's one after the other and one after the other, one after the other. And then they get down to me and I'm like, so. How many of y'all know what the word entrepreneur is? <laughs> and in three years, probably seeing a hundred students each year, I had one girl raise her hand. Yeah. She says, I do. I said, what is it? Yeah. She said, it's a business owner. I said, okay, I'll take that. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of okay. These yeah. <laughs> other people, these beautifully college educated people are talking about entrepreneurship and why you need to do it and why you didn't need to do it. They get down to me. It's like, how many of y'all even know what they said? They're like, we have no idea. Yeah. I said, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. Let me explain that to you. And then they're like, the lights go off. Then they're like, oh. It's like, now how many of y'all thought about becoming a plumber? And you know, they all look at each other like, no way. And it's like, well, wait, I know plumbers that make this kind of money. And I look down the line, how many of y'all have people that work for y'all that make this kind of money? And none of them raise their hands. So they're all like, okay, this is interesting. And it's like, look, you don't just have to be a plumber. You can be an electrician, an HVAC tech. Those are the skilled trades because you normally have to have a license. Yeah. Then you can get in to roofing and welding and carpentry and, and a million other things. And then I ask them, how many of y'all like to build things or like to fix things? And man, the hands start going up. It's like, guys, y'all don't need to go to college. Y'all have another career or opportunity ahead of you. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, so many of my friends went to college and they just like, that was the thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of them actually did get in the trades after because they were just like, I like to be outside. I like work with my hands. I don't like to be in an office. I like to fix things. I like to keep work at work and then go home. <laughs> like, as opposed to getting emails or whatever, even well, even back then, you just get phone calls. Um, so you you have a bunch of courses um, mm -hmm. that you're putting forward to help 
this are in, is it part of like an academy that you're trying to build? I mean, that this seems like an initiative that a lot of um, people could get behind, not only like just entrepreneurs, but I mean, I would think governments, local municipalities, because there's such a tremendous need for this. I mean, San Francisco, where I live, Good luck getting a good plumber unless you know him. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I spoke at a real estate event the other day. I mean, I teach all kinds of entrepreneurs how to do social media, how to do YouTube, how to make money on it. And I spoke at this real estate event and this lady came up to me and she says, look, Roger, oh my God, I love that you're a plumber. Do you have a good plumber in Chicago? I said, oh, no, I don't. She said, I don't either. And I said, well, where, where are you located? She says, no, I'm a real estate agent in Chicago. I said, and you don't have a good plumber? She said, no. They don't answer their phones. They don't show up when they tell you they will, or they just don't do a good job. She said, so I've literally quit referring anybody. And I told somebody else that the other day out of LA. They said, oh yeah, I'm a real estate agent. I told him, said, hey, I got a lady in Chicago. And he's like the same thing. He said, I don't refer plumbers. You can't trust them. They don't show up. They don't even answer their phones. And I mean, think about that. Think, think about how big the demand is for plumbers right now. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. Right now, most plumbers across the country, I'm going to tell you, probably make 30 to $50 an hour on their paychecks. In the next four or five years, that's going to be $100 an hour. Yeah. If I don't get help recruiting people into the trades, a couple of years after that, it's going to be $200 an hour. You're going to be seeing plumbers that are just driving a truck every day, pulling up to fix your toilet, making $400,000 a year yeah. because they make about $200 an hour on the check and they're going to be in demand. How scary is that? What I'm trying to do, I, mean, I, I, I some days I feel like I'm trying to save America. <laughs> I, I do. It, it, it's, it's Well, tough. it's not, that's, so it's not far from it. I mean, yeah, like you. Again, I mean Silicon Valley, so we're all about oh I, AI and tech and blah blah you blah. Bet. And it, you know, we 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 get myopic actually because we don't understand like the fundamentals of how society works. Mm -hmm. We we assume that technology fixes everything, which there's technology advancements. I mean, when I talk technology, most people are thinking high tech technology, but if you go back far enough, plumbing was an advanced technology, electricity was advanced technology, roads advanced technology. I mean, it's these fundamental things that keep society moving. And yeah, if you don't, can't fix stuff, like physical stuff, the world just gets a lot more harder. Or build new stuff. I, I mean, stuff, yeah. anybody listening to this right now, if you're driving down the road, if you're in an office, turn and look out the window. Look at anything that is not growing and understand it was built or is being repaired by tradesmen each and every day. Blue collar workers were the original thought leaders. How do we build this? And they pulled out their tools. They tied two boards together, what, whatever they did. And, and it, and, and it's slowly going away. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, I don't know how to put it. Well, well th think about this. Well, let's go. Let's go ahead ten years. You say it's hard to get a plumber right now. What if there's only twenty five percent of the amount of plumbers that there are ten years from now? And imagine the population ten years from now is twenty five percent bigger. That's not far fetched. No, no, no. Realistic. Supply and demand. You you tell me. Um, remember, I'm an uneducated high school graduate. <laughs> what is supply and demand going to do in that oh, situation? Yeah, prices go up. Obviously. They're, they're going to go up a <laughs> lot. Yep. The, the the kid. I kid you not. The kids getting into the trades right now have the greatest opportunity in the world yeah. because they're walking into a career that number one, they're getting paid to learn from day one. They're not paying any college debt. 
And in five years, in 10 years, it's going to be some of the highest paid jobs around. Yeah. We're going to make more than doctors and lawyers because there's going to be plenty of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, AI is probably going to get rid of some of them. Uh, yeah. You can <laughs> tell AI to write you up a defense right now and it'll, it's got you covered. I mean, you know, AI can pass the bar. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. I, and so, so yeah. So it's interesting because anything that's rules based, that's virtual that requires some intellectual thought, you know, basically argument or whatever. I mean, there will be a time where, you know, your lawyer will be augmented by AI and mostly all the rudimentary stuff will just be done. I mean, government is going to see this as well. I mean, just imagine the IRS and your tax accountant. Like, there is no, it's not a stretch to think that your accountant you will no longer need because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's all rules. It's, you bet. It's it's all rules. Num numbers got to add up. And there's text, and these are the rules, and you apply bet. the rules. It's, it's When it's rules-based, this stuff excels. Mm -hmm. When it's not rules-based, when it's creative, and when it's physical, I mean, I don't think robots will take over all of this soon, but there is a nuance to the physical world, interaction with the physical world, that is really, really tough to get right. I mean, even the self-driving cars around San Francisco, like, yeah, they're okay, but Sometimes they just stop. <laughs> and, and we thought the Jetson car would be here by now. Exactly. You know, and, and we really did. But yeah. think about that. We've, we've already got robots in, in the trades. We've got robots that can take a piece of pipe, cut it, cut a pattern in it to where it can weld another piece of pipe in it to where it created a fitting where you, you don't need to make a fitting now. Yeah. So we're already looking at the trades of, of how do we do this? And everybody says, well, that's just going to take work away from the trades. No, because you still got to have a guy that can program that machine, tell it exactly where to cut, set it up, check it, double check it, x-ray it, whatever needs to be done. So the, the opportunity here is nothing but phenomenal for anybody. And, and I always say kids, I'm, I'm wanting to get kids into the trade. But I mean, right now, there's somebody driving down the road, headed to McDonald's, to go cook French fries today. And let's say they're out in California, so they make 15, 20 bucks an hour. And they think, hey, this isn't a bad gig. Well, I understand that. But is that is that where you want to retire? Is that your life goal? And they're like, well, you know, I can't afford to get into the, the trades because they'll only start me out at $15 an hour. And right now I make 20. Yeah, take that pay cut for a little bit. Get in, work your tail off. And show them, look, I'm here every freaking day. I'm here on time. I have a positive attitude and I want to learn that, you know what? You just got a $5 hour raise right there. Oh yeah. That and now you've got the opportunity in California not to, to make that hundred dollars an hour right now, yeah. because California, I've seen plumbers making over 200 grand a year for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I like how you brought up technology in the trades as well, because mm -hmm. I think it's only going to get more sophisticated and there's going to be more and more, you know, machine assisted for lack of a better word. I mean, I saw the other day, there was this, uh, it was like this contraption with this guy had a air chisel. He's like going to need to make a hole in a wall, which normally this would be really challenging, but he's got this rig looks almost looks like from alien. And he's like, you know, and not only does he have, he has to, a machine can't do this because of the angles, whatever, but not only is he more efficient, not going to get hurt as often and not get fatigued. So therefore he's going to be safe. And then I saw this other thing, which was kind of cool. It was a uh, drywall, what do they call it? Mudding machine. Mm -hmm. It's mudding. Literally it was this machine that would put, put the mud on drywall and someone's got to program that someone's got to like make sure because you know, still need the, 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 the human in the mix. But S Somebody told me that they just invested in this machine. I think their machine was $70,000, $80,000, something like that. They can literally carry it into a room and tell it, okay, here's a picture of Roger's face. Paint his face on this wall. Yep. yep. And th this thing will go through and do it in just a few minutes. Yep. They can do it outside or they can put it in front of that wall and say, make this wall look like a black and white marble wall with hints of gold flake in it 
and it can paint this wall where it looks like it was hand painted by Picasso. Well, maybe not Picasso. <laughs> it was someone hand- similar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You probably don't want. Well, some people would. Maybe want somebody would. I mean, wall. yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, Leonardo so, da Vinci, like you, you, Leonardo. You bet. You, you bet. <laughs> so you, you know, yeah, yeah. Let's not do Salvador Dali. Let's stay away from that. <laughs> but, but I mean, you you look at it. And say, look, we've got technology getting there now. You know, my, my son and I have a company. We manufacture leak detection equipment yeah. for plumbers yeah. because we found a great technology. We, we helped work on it and improve it. And now we're teaching plumbers to do something most plumbers don't know how to do. Find leaks under a slab. Yeah. Pinpoint it. Locate it. Tell your customer, look, we know this is where it is. Now you give them options. Do we make a hole in the floor? Do we tunnel underneath? Yeah. Here in Texas, we do a lot of tunneling. So there's just, there's so many different things out there that we can learn to help make us all better. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I just think this is going to start to accelerate, um, especially the supply and demand problem that you just mentioned. You know, people are going to want to, well, as demand goes up and supply constricts, Mm -hmm. prices go up and then opportunity uncover. That's where entrepreneurs always see opportunity. So it really is a huge opportunity for those that, hey, you don't need to go to college, learn a trade, learn how to be an entrepreneur, learn how to run a business, take, take it in your own hands. Because, you know, this job as an entrepreneur is honestly, it's not that hard and anyone can do it. I mean, literally anyone, because the entire world needs some sort of entrepreneur no matter who you are, like mm-hmm. fundamental is someone's got to create something from nothing and sell it to make a profit. And the entrepreneur journey is all about trying to figure out what to create and how to create it and how to help your community. And I, I just, I just love the, I love the, I love the goal. I, lo- I like, I, I love the fact that you're working on something that's meaningful to people that otherwise may not have an opportunity to have meaningful work. Because I mean, one of the things that my dad taught me, we used to work on our house a lot and it just would drive me crazy. (laughs) I'm 10, I'm I'm 10, I'm digging ditches and pouring concrete. You bet. I was out under under my dad's car helping him change the brakes. So yeah, I get it. And the oil, like- You bet, everything, alternators, starters, fuel pumps, we got this. Yeah, we did, you know, we did the head gasket on any, all that stuff, right? And- I would piss me off. I hated it. I couldn't go play with my buddies, right? You know, like, God, Dad, really? Do we have to work today? But you know, that really motivated me to be like, you know, this is really hard. <laughs> Maybe I should go to college because that was for me. But I just have an appreciation for it that I, I can't put my finger. I mean, it's just such a hard thing to do, right? I mean, and complex. And it does take executive function that, People, I don't think appreciate as much, you know? You know, here's something you just said that I love. I did the same thing with my little brother. I got him a job plumbing when he graduated high school. And he worked for me for one summer. And I made sure he had the hardest jobs to do every day. And before the end of the summer, he he says, hey, dad, I'm going to college. You know, (laughs) let's make this happen. I'm not working out. I'm not going to be a plumber for sure. He went to school, got a degree in marketing and microbiology. Now he's a vice president of IT for a big financial company nationwide. And he's got so many different securities backgrounds, but his job is to make sure that they don't get hacked. And he's great at what he does and he loves it. And he's in front of a computer all day, every day. And he's like, hey, I like what I do. It has nothing to do with the shovel or anything at all like that. So, but think about too, what if instead of all the parents sending their kid off to college, look, we're just going to send you to college. You'll figure out what you want to be after you're there. What if we sent kids into some kind of a training academy that teaches them how to use hand tools, how to look at blueprints, how to read a tape measure? And then maybe just a little bit about plumbing, electrical, HVAC, and roofing, and carpentry. Just a little bit. 
I really think that after say eight weeks or somewhere around in there, and I'm just, I'm just throwing this out. Some of these kids are going to say, Hey mom, dad, I don't want to go to college. I want I want to build houses. I want, I want to build high rises. I want to be a plumber. I want to be an electrician. And that eight week course, eight week course gives them enough information that they can walk in with the right training and interview with you, the entrepreneur that owns an electrical company. And you say, wow, you know what, man, I love your attitude. I love that you already know how to do this and this and this. Yeah. We're going to give you a job and, and we're not going to start you out at minimum wage. Now they don't waste all this money going to college. I know so many kids that went to college that get in the trades. So many people that went to college that aren't doing what they went to college for. And it's like, is it really worth it to send them there? Why not just send them out to get a job? Help them get a job in plumbing, electrical, HVAC, anything at all to where they can learn to do something with their hands, whether they do it or not. The good thing is, you know, right now, if you had to dig a hole at your house, you're like, look, I know how to do this. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know how to do it. And I know what my limitation is. And I know how to tell people, okay, look, this, I think something's wrong here. Right. And, <laughs> but, but I love, God, I love the idea of, like the summer internship in the trades. Because, I mean, one of the things I've always thought about, which I, 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 a lot of, a lot of other countries do this, but we don't, is this whole idea of service, like a year or two of service for the country. It seems, yeah, we'll do, you know, you could go in the military or whatever. You can maybe go do you know, Peace Corps or whatever. Um, but what a powerful way to be like, look, for a year, you are going to go and you are going to serve the community in your country and you're going to do these sort of jobs, whatever they are, just to get exposed to it. I mean, you know, a lot of rich kids take a gap year. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, whatever, you're just messing around or whatever. But, I, but to your point, exposure to different ways of working and being and, and jobs. Like one of the things that I used to do when I used to be a publicist with professional athletes is I used to teach kids in the inner city entrepreneurship. And these are like kids that are like hardcore, like they don't have much. They're really pretty. Some of the areas we were in at the lowest or the highest, sorry, highest childhood poverty in the nation it was in Memphis for a, for a player called Dontari Poe. And um, we, we had three days with them to just like teach them entrepreneurship. Let's just show you what this is about. And... By the end of those three days, these kids were pitching massive like companies, tech companies, whatever, like they're the CEO. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're like crushing it. Like you would be like, I'm, I'm giving you money, right? That was only in three days because someone cared and someone was teaching them. Someone exposed them to what this is. And I think as a kid, you know, again, like my dad. And my parents exposed me to a lot of things. I mean, my dad was an electrical engineer. So, of course, he pushed me to be an electrical engineer. Um, but the exposure to this, I think, is critical because there is honor in being a tradesperson. It's a well skill. It's a great path to the middle class and more. And I think it doesn't get the credit it deserves. And I think, to your point, I mean, this, this idea of some sort of like, internship or whatever i mean maybe if like when you're in high school every every summer you do a different internship you do God, wouldn't that be amazing now, oh, it'd be great. Yeah. you do trades and then you do like the other the other job that really convinced me okay i should go to college like i worked at mcdonald's right hard job i worked, oh, I worked at, at a burger place too i, I get it and, and you're just like this is hard this is a different kind of hard than you know going to whatever and i'm just like you know I, I'm motivated. <laughs> and it, 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 you know what I mean? No, it, it makes perfect sense. But, but you can also take time to teach them. P -p Part of the deal, my courses are not about how to put pipe together, how to pull wires, how to charge a system. I teach people, and I, I was interviewed by one of the ladies at this event the other day, and she works for a big company. And I, she says, so like, what all do you teach? I said, well, let's just say getting into the trades. I said, I want you to, to imagine you're setting an interview and I walk in and I come up and I say, Miss Becca, my name's Roger Wakefield. I'm here for the interview. 
I just want to tell you, thank you for the opportunity. And then I take my seat. And I look at you and I answer your questions. And we go through and you ask me something that maybe I need to look at my phone for, you know, a date or, or something. And I'm like, look, I turned my phone off uh, for this interview. Do you mind if I go ahead and t- I'll turn it on just a second and turn it back off? And I get that information, put it back up. And then when we get through with the interview, Ms. Becca says, okay, Roger, do you have any questions for me? I said, well, yes, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I do. So first of all, how does me coming to work here help you? What is it you're looking for? And in my interview process today, did I give you enough information to let you know if I could or could not fill that position? I'd really like to know that. And you know, give me an answer, yes or no. And we talked about that. And then at the end, I say, okay, if I come to work for your company, how does it help me? Because I want to be a good professional. I want to be great at what I do. And I just want to know that by me coming to work here, will I get the training? Will I get the education? Will I get the tools that I need to become great? And she's like, wow. And I said, and then the interview's over. And I get up and I come to you and I shake your hand again. So Miss Becca, look, I'm Roger Wakefield. And I want this job. And I think that I've done everything in my power to show you that I have. But even if you don't hire me, I just want to let you know, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and interview with you. I researched your company. I really think it'd be a great place to work. And you walk out. I said, are you hiring him? She says, oh, God, yes. (laughs) I said, have you ever sat through an interview where somebody walked in and made you feel like they're interviewing you, but they're also proud of the opportunity to be there? She said, Roger, I got chills when you were talking. I said, this is what I'm trying to teach kids. There's a way to make more money before you ever walk in the door. Mm -hmm. And it's learn how to present yourself and present your attitude. Mm -hmm. I've got 10 or 12 different things that I teach just to how to get in the trades and how to get the right job, how to get in the right trade. How do you know what would be best for you? If I just started out, it wouldn't have bothered me. (laughs) <laughs> if you just if you just started out and service plumbing and you had to walk in and, and deal with poop the first day, you might be, look, I'm out of here. I'm never doing this again. I'm the kind of guy I look at it and think, man, if this is as bad as it ever gets, I got this made. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you learn to look wow. at it that way. But I teach people that have plumbing licenses too or, or electrical or HVAC. What do you need to learn to move up and make more money? And it all goes back to things kind of like those soft skills I just talked about. Exactly. Present yourself as somebody that is the professional that they want or need. And you bring more value to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you could just teach people how to do that, like show up when you say you're going to show up. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I give, there's a list of 10 things you need, no skill to do to be great. Yeah. yeah. Show up. Show up on time. Be honest. Be positive. Yeah. 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 Yes. Be willing to learn. Be coachable. Well, I think the sing when I've interviewed you know, like lots of people for engineers and others like the companies, that's the single trait I look for is coachability. Because <laughs> like engineering, you know, I would building stuff never existed before. I mean, like this is really hard, right? And if you think you have all the answers, you are completely delusional. Because oh yeah, no one has all the answers. But if you've got, to your point, the right attitude, the learning mentality, you're coachable. I always looked for, are you someone that can solve a problem that you've never seen before? And that is, has a ton to do with attitude, a ton to do with the confidence in, in yourself. But more importantly, like asking for help. Are you, can you, you know, like there's, there's a method and those are so simple to learn and so powerful. And, and think about what you just said, because part of my deal in my, in my coaching in the course is if somebody says, oh, my gosh, how, how did you learn to just come in and, and address the room? Because if there's four people in there, you shake all four people's hands, you introduce yourself and whatever you do, you remember their name. Yeah. names. Important. If you've got to have a notepad with you to write it down as soon as you sit down, remember their name. That way, when you address them. Mr. Bolander. You asked me how I got good at this. I've never been on a job interview before. But I got coached by a guy named Roger Wakefield, and he taught me 
how to do research on a company to find the right company I want to work for, to find the right trade I want to work for, and to find even the right niche in it because I don't want to do service. I want to do new construction. I don't want to do commercial. I want to do residential. And you're that company. And he taught me how to prepare for this interview. Well, I've just told you, number one, I'm coachable. Roger told me what to do. And not only did he tell me what to do, I did it. And I mean, think about how simple that was. And when you can teach kids to do this, when you can teach adults to do this, look, you want want to make more money? Present yourself, walk in the office this way and say, hey, I would like to talk to you all about a superintendent position that's open. And I want to explain to you why I think that I could be the right person for that job. And when you can communicate that clearly, which we're not taught that. We go to school, they teach us to read and write and talk. They don't teach us to listen. So if we communicate that and then sit down and listen to what this person says, and I teach them, listen to repeat. Don't just listen thinking you know what they're going to say. Listen so well that you can repeat. Well, you can say, so, so Mr. Bolander, from what you said, you're looking for someone that's coachable. You're looking for someone that listens and pays attention. And I just want you to know, I believe I can fill that position. And you, you've put yourself at a level nobody ever puts themselves at. And it's so easy to do these days. And that's why I do what I do. Wow. Well, Roger, I appreciate your time, man. This has been great. Good luck. If there's anything I can do or the show can do, you just let us know because I do think you are correct. This is a critical need. And I don't think it's a big stretch to say that society's future does rest on being able to solve this problem. No hands of ifs or buts about it. Because you need people to fix things and build things. And if you don't have them, things collapse. <laughs> so thanks again. I really appreciate your time. Johnny, this has been great. All I can ask you, your show, the people listening, if you like what you heard, tell 400,000 of your closest friends about what I'm doing. Maybe we can <laughs> fix the problem. That's for sure. So please do that. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thanks for listening to the Entrepreneur Ethos Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did creating it. My hope is that you learned something that can make you a little bit better. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do share it with friends and review it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also join my email list by visiting theentrepreneurethos.com to get my thoughts on what I'm doing to get better as well as what I'm working on. You can also pick up my book, The Entrepreneur Ethos, if you want to learn the traits values, and beliefs that I think we need to build a more ethical, inclusive, and resilient entrepreneur, and frankly, world community. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at The Daily MBA, and let me know if you have any questions or recommendations for a guest you'd like me to talk to. Also, drop me a note if you try anything we talked about on this or any other episode. I'd love to hear what's working for you. Until next time, keep getting better.